the summer split specifically and about you as a player, I, I have a few questions because I've read that you would play 80 carry if you weren't a top laner. Mm -hmm. and, and so now you're in this space where it's not tanks only top. Like we're starting to see carry champions. We saw you play Fiora last week. So how are you enjoying the possibility of maybe playing some more top lane carries and really being able to show off uh, more of that individual skill that maybe you wouldn't totally see on tank champion? Yeah, honestly, I I really love playing carries. It's obviously more fun to do more damage, but in terms of competition, I don't care what I play. I just care about the result. So if I'm playing a carry and if it's getting us wins, then I'm really happy for the team. But my own personal... Uh, Spotlight doesn't really matter for me as long as we're winning. So, yeah, carries are obviously fun to play because you get to kind of show off, but it's whatever to me. As long as we're winning, that's all I really care about. So, I'm just going to do that. Speaking of showing off a little bit, last week we saw you playing Fiora, and you were unfortunately on the receiving end of a play from Afromu, uh, where he hit that long distance tempered fate, and you tried to get out, you didn't quite get out. And I noticed that you, you immuned the tempered fate. And I want to ask, like, do you stand by that decision to do that? And do you think, like, there was anything else you could have done? Because we were, we were talking about it in the office, and somebody said, should he have immuned that? And I, I honestly don't know the answer. You probably could tell us better than we could tell you. Um, I, I do shine out a flash there, so I knew there's no chance of me killing him. I'm pretty sure. Um, and being might have flashed already, I'm not quite certain, but I don't think I could have killed him. And I thought if I W'd the Bard ult that I could just... Uh, create enough distance just get away and that was my goal after i couldn't kill the shen after i saw it so this is my thought process i'm not sure if he had flash or not he, he might have had flash and it probably would have been possible if he had flash if not i probably could have one for one and it could have been a good option as well okay but who knows it always sucks to be on the receiving <laughs> end of a highlight you know so yeah, I, yeah, but yeah. i wanted to ask about it um so okay so let's talk a little bit about the beginning of the split for team liquid what was your reaction when you found out that this team was going to field the same roster for Summer Split? Um, I, th I really had high hopes. I think once Kane showed his strengths and leadership during relegations and like by the end of the split, I had high hopes to be able for him to be able to meld this roster into something better. And I think there's still room for that. And I think there's just a lot of feeling out we have to do and just understanding like what mid's better right now, what we can do with... Uh, the five that we have and like what our strengths are. And I think we're still just trying to find that. And I think Kane will lead us in the right, in the right direction with time. Uh, I have to ask, like we, we went into the season and, and obviously golden glue was, got the start and now he's already been subbed out for a series. Is this, is this affecting morale at all? Like it, it, to me, my feeling is there's already, there could already be a fear that this split is ends up like the last split, right? Like it's like, Oh, we've done this already. And now it's going to happen again. Um, I think it's easy to get that uh first impression or just like that first thought because it's definitely happened already. But I think for me and for the other five players, I don't think we're in that mindset or we want to be like throughout the season. I think we just want to do as much as we can with the uh, players we have and the staff we have and just try to uh, gain and get results. Because if you have that mindset, you're not going to be able to just, you, know, you got a whole season to play. If you have that mindset from the start, like why are you even here? So I'm just making sure that all five of us keep trying really hard, and I think we can. We like we have really good players, and we definitely can make it work. It just depends on how fast we can meld this five. So, how do you personally view your role on this team as, as like a younger player who's you know you've had a couple splits in the LCS now, like you've you've been in the LCS for a little while, and I don't think anybody would criticize your effort. I haven't seen any criticism of it, but at the same time, like you're on this team that you know in 2017 has not done as well as as people would perhaps think it could so how do you view your particular piece of the greater team liquid puzzle um i think my work ethic among the five is probably really high like next to piglet right now i think me and him work super hard on this team and i like i work my ass off i have like a wrist injury right now it's like it's i have carpal tunnel in both my hands so it's kind of hard for me to play as much solo queue as i want but i'm definitely working extremely hard and, and I pretty much put all of my life into this in a sense because I came out here at 17. I dropped out of my senior year of high school and I like fully committed. And I'm just making sure that that effort I'm putting in will lead to something in the future. And I hope 
as an individual that I keep growing because even if this uh, split or season doesn't work, I can still show results in the future. And yeah. I want to ask about Piglet actually, because there was an interview that I'm sure you've heard about with Invin where he talked about how frustrated he was with, with the situation in the team. Is that something that you guys talked about? Like, and, and did anybody take that personally? Because I think for the community, it was quite, it seemed like quite scandalous to have him say some of the things he said about the team. Um, honestly, everyone knows Piglet's like a person that just speaks from the heart if you've been around him for a while. So honestly, for me, I didn't expect anything different. I think it's just him speaking his mind. And I think that's a good thing because it probably opens, it's a transparency to the community, but also to his teammates, because sometimes it's hard for him to speak up. And I think even him doing an interview just like gave a different opinion for not only us, but also the community. And I think it was, it was good. I don't think anyone has to be really worried about that. Okay. I want to just rewind. You mentioned that you had an injury, and I've also seen this in past videos. So what are you doing to, like, manage that carpal tunnel? Do you guys have, like, a do you guys have like a physical therapist or something on staff? Like, what, what are you personally doing to make sure that you don't make that worse than it than it could be? Yeah, right now I'm – I was dealing with, like, some insurance problems, but uh, just trying to situate that. But, yeah, I've been going to a physical therapist, and – yeah, I've just been doing wrist exercises. I've been looking up. I've been talking to like Birgen High because uh, they've been through similar wrist uh, injuries as well. They told me a few tips like getting like wrist braces to sleep or like having a grip strength thing. It's just like a little bit of things they gave me in terms of advice that I'm going to take and hopefully fix my wrist in time. So, Okay. So we saw the announcement of franchising uh, last week. That was a pretty exciting moment, I think, for a lot of people. Is that do you do you see that franchising announcement as like a mostly positive thing for players? And is there any is there anything that you wish you'd seen in that announcement that you didn't see? Um, I think franchising is just gonna be good as a whole. Like I'm not, it's definitely just positive. Like if I think about franchising, I'm just really excited because I think it gives more job security to players. Just gives more. This is beneficial to the ecosystem and just like raises the bar for the growth of LCS. And I think that's really exciting. And overall, it's just going to drive more attention, drive more, just pretty much everything. It's just going to grow the scene because I still think it's like the starting point for LCS in terms of how big it can actually get. I want to just ask a little bit now. I just want to go and sort of look over your last year. Um, and so first off, you we had the spring split. We had you on this team and just trying to avoid relegation and we had double lift brought in I want to ask what was it like playing with him and did you pick anything up from him since he has you know he has that sort of reputation as being a pretty verbal guy pretty enthusiastic guy like what was that like yeah so peter was a really good addition to the team for the time that he was on the team he definitely i he gave us more insight on how to play the game. He definitely helped with our, our vision control and just gave us more information as a team. And also he helped me individually by just showing me leadership skills that I didn't have in the past because I've been trying to just grow myself as an individual. And I think he helped me and just helped my communication in, in the team as a whole and just making sure I say the right things at the right time. And also just, I think the biggest thing I learned from him is probably how to discuss post game because he's really good in a post game and he just knows how to just really grab attention and uh, pinpoint the right thing. So I learned a lot from him from the post game as well. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Cause I think the post game thing is something that a lot of casual fans don't, don't understand. And like, uh -huh. it's, it's, I mean, if you're in a solo queue game and you go to the lobby, people have words for each other. That's not a healthy post game environment. Right. So, yeah. so what is it about what double lift brought to that environment that made it good for the team? Like what, it, what are some of the things he did? Um, so he's always straight to the point. Like, there's a lot of teams that avoid issues, and there's a lot of teams that don't even know what to say. But he is really experienced. He's played for countless years. Like, after a game, he knows exactly what he wants to talk about when he goes in post game. He brings it up immediately. He calls out people when they need to be called out. He just makes sure the right things are being said at the right time. And he also just, like, people respect him a lot, so it's easy for him to get his point across. And then it's a really easy discussion after that. And I think he just contributes a lot because of the experience he has already obtained. Sure. You mentioned earlier that you wanted to, that you, you were focused on developing yourself as a player. And I wanted to ask, how do you focus on personal improvement in game? 
when the situation is maybe not optimal. Like we saw roll swaps last last split. We've seen roster changes. We've already seen a substitution for Team Liquid. So so mm-hmm. what do you, how do you focus on that personal improvement when these these changes are happening and quite frankly like criticism sometimes is flying from from fans about Team Liquid situation. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of criticism. It's uh it's hard for me to take that in, but honestly, I, I try to avoid it because if if I just dwell on it too much, it's going to make my situation worse. I just kind of try to focus on myself and honestly, even when roll stops happen, you can still improve as a player. It doesn't matter if your roster gets switched around. You have personal goals to improve on. You have personal mistakes that you're messing up on in game. And you just, you just focus on those. Like if you're TPing in the wrong spot for me because I play top lane, if you're just like moving at the wrong spot, if you're losing lane matchups, if you want to learn more champions, there's a lot of things that you can always improve on uh, throughout the season that even if the roster's going up and down, you can still improve as a player as a whole. So. You mentioned avoiding criticism, but I noticed on Twitter uh, there there was actually a lot of outreach just trying to support you. I think after week one, um, and you you actually tweeted and thanked people for that, which I thought was interesting because like like you just said, a lot of pros kind of just try. I, it seems like they're trying to just tone that down, like they tone it out so they don't have to think about all of the comments. Because I mean, you could endlessly read Twitter or Reddit. I'm sure if you wanted opinions, right? So, mm-hmm. so how how valuable is that support? I guess to to hear these people coming out and saying like, "Don't worry, you you got them next week." It's honestly, it's really refreshing. It just it motivates me even more to keep improving because it, it's really awesome to know that there's actual fans that really really care about the players and they're not just there if you're winning and they're there even if you're losing. So it really means a lot for the people that actually even take time out of the day just like send me a message on Twitter like private message me like even some of my friends that i haven't talked to in a while like message me so it's really awesome that people come up to me like that and just give me support when they obviously know i'm struggling so or the team is struggling and uh, i guess i want to ask you what you think about your play has improved the most over the past year like when you look if you look back at a vod from a year ago and you compare it to today what do you what do you think has improved the most um I think I'm not as hesitant as I was before. I'm really confident in my own play now. I think I can just just pretty much do anything I put my mind to and just work on it really hard. And I think in the past, I had a lot of confidence issues. And I think now I'm insanely confident. Even when I'm on stage, I'm not as nervous. Like It's very rarely that I'm actually nervous playing even like the biggest matches. So I think it's just confidence is the biggest uh, factor from the past and now. I have to say that I find that answer pretty remarkable, just given the fact that the environment you've been in for the past year has not always been the most stable environment where I'm sure the organization is doing their best to help you, but it's mm-hmm. not, it's, it's been an environment that's been in flux, you know? So for you to, to say that your confidence is the thing that you built the most during that period of time. I mean, that, that seems really remarkable to me. Like how did, how did you build that? Um, I think the biggest thing is just see my personal play improve in terms of just everything, like mechanics, just game knowledge, and also just me feeling just like winning uh, lane matchups and just doing more for my team. It just led to a uh, slow growth of confidence and also just me as a person is developing. I think I've developed so much in the past two years. And I've really gotten to experience, I guess, the real life aspect because before this, I was just a 17 year old kid chilling at home playing video games for 15 hours a day. But I actually got to just, like get out in the real world, experience everything, like hang out with, yeah, just a lot of different people that I didn't expect to hang out with. And I just like grew up as a person. I think that it's uh, it's another big factor in me just like getting that confidence and just moving forward. Finally, I want to ask, over your whole career in League of Legends, what's been your favorite moment? Ooh, favorite moment. Um. Honestly, I think it was when the first split in 2016 when we played game five for CLG. Even though we lost, like I haven't felt that much emotion in a game. It was it was so fun because it was my rookie split and we were like one game away from finals. And it was just like it was a pretty uh, crazy experience for me. I'll probably never forget that day because we were like so close to winning that game too. So it's just like a really big highlight of my career. You know, for me. the fact that you mentioned that as your favorite moment and then talked about how you've built confidence <laughs> over the past year despite all the adversity, that's that's pretty incredible. Like that that seems to me to be sort of a, a trend here. So I think 
think you've got a lot of fans that are looking forward to see if that will continue in the future. I guess I want to ask you, do you have anything else you want to say? Any shout outs that you want to give? Um, I guess just thanks for all the support. I know there's definitely Team Liquid fans out there that are still like constantly supporting me and also just the organization as a whole. And I just really want to thank you guys because I wouldn't be doing this or like have the drive to this if it wasn't for you. And yeah, I just a really big thanks and I appreciate all the people that support Team Liquid and me. So great, thanks a lot. I, I really appreciate the interview. Thanks for taking some time for me. And uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, best of luck. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content, be sure to hit that subscribe button.